New Zealand is traditionally considered the last major landmass to be settled by humans, with the Maori arriving around 1300 AD. However, a significant discovery on the North Island could upend this view. In the dense vegetation of the Kaimanawa Ranges lies the Kaimanawa Wall, a megalithic structure made of precisely fitted stones. This formation has sparked debate about its origins and New Zealand's ancient history. The wall's stones are massive, weighing several tons each, and made of ignimbrite, a volcanic stone found 3 miles 5 kilometers, away. Estimated to be 330,000 years old, these stones are arranged with geometric precision, featuring straight lines and angles uncommon in natural formations. This has led some to suggest the wall might be part of a larger, yet unexcavated, megalithic structure. In 1996, archaeologist Barry Brailsford investigated the wall, noting its precise alignment due north, a notable feature often found in ancient megalithic sites like the pyramids of Giza, Stonehenge, and Chichen Itza. Brailsford concluded that the stone blocks were not natural but were precisely cut and stacked. His findings were published in an article in the New Zealand Listener titled Megalith Mystery. Are giant stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park evidence of an ancient New Zealand culture? Brailsford stated, there was no doubt that the stones had been cut. The four visible stones in the front wall were a uniform 1.6 meters tall and 1 meter wide. In one place, one could insert an arm into a cavity and feel the smooth back and front faces of the next tier. The joints were knife blade thin, and further up the hill, other stones protruded, suggesting a larger buried structure. The Waitaha, often mentioned in early New Zealand history, are a controversial and not widely recognized group in mainstream academia. Some accounts, especially non-academic ones, suggest the Waitaha were the first settlers in New Zealand. Brailsford, a proponent of this theory, initially attributed the structure to the Waitaha and even consulted their elders, who shared surprising information. The Maori also denied constructing the wall, as they had no history of building megalithic structures. The stone blocks extend 82 feet, 25 meters, in a straight line from east to west. Researcher Brian Forrester, who has visited many ancient megalithic sites worldwide, was fascinated by the Kaimanawa Wall. During his visit, he noted that the structure was the only stone outcrop in the area, with no other stones found within a 20-mile radius. He observed that the flat stone blocks were fitted similarly to those in Cusco. Cutting massive stone blocks and fitting them without mortar is an advanced ancient construction technique found in places like Peru and Egypt. This durable polygonal masonry was developed by cultures with no communication and insufficient tools for quarrying, transporting, carving, or placing these stones. Many believe these cultures inherited these sites from a global, technologically advanced ancient civilization that vanished, possibly due to a cataclysm. At the Kaimanawa Wall, a consistent bevel on the upper stones is noted, identical across the structure. A key indicator of human construction is the precisely cut recesses in some lower blocks, allowing them to interlock with the blocks above. This lower block was likely displaced by the 186 AD eruption and earthquake. Perfectly smooth rock surfaces with square edges were found at the base of one part of the structure, also seen in another section. In one area, a floor surface emitted a hollow sound when tapped, suggesting it might be a roof concealing an underlying chamber. Probes often hit solid rock beneath the earth around the site. Given the flat area around the Kaimanawa wall, some suggest the evenly sloped mound behind it might hide a massive pyramidal structure. On one side of the hill, more precisely aligned stone blocks are visible, mirroring the hill's incline. Another small section of exposed stone blocks nearby also shows the same degree of incline. A short distance away, a third piece has been unearthed, showing the same precise symmetry and alignment as before. It features beveled edges similar to the main structure, with an almost identical angle to other stones. This consistency raises questions about the site's true nature. Could it be more than just a stone wall? Might it actually be an ancient pyramid, similar to those found in America? Most American pyramids initially looked like natural landscapes due to being covered in soil and vegetation. For instance, the pyramids at Teotihuacan appeared as ordinary hills, and the Temple Pyramid at Tikal only revealed a small part of its structure. Similarly, in New Zealand, the Kaimanawa Wall revealed a remarkable discovery using ground-penetrating radar. As shown in the picture, 2 or 3 meters, almost 10 feet, below the white tape, the radar showed the same pattern as the wall on the surface. This indicated that the structure continued underground with massive ignimbrite blocks stacked together. 
Additionally, the video revealed intriguing rock incisions on the surface of a hard rhyolite rock. This information suggests the structure is more sophisticated than a mere wall. Interestingly, volcanic rocks high in silica content are found in areas with geological faults and strong magnetic fields. Water flowing across such stones can generate electric currents, utilizing silica's properties, similar to its use in computing for information storage and conduction. The site's location on a fault line, known for strong magnetic and telluric energies, led many to theorize that the structure could have harnessed the Earth's natural forces. Despite these findings, the New Zealand government denies that the structure is the work of an advanced ancient civilization predating the Maori. They have forbidden archaeological excavations at the site, claiming it is a natural formation from volcanic activity. This stance raises questions, especially since no proper excavation has been conducted. The government's position is influenced by the need to be politically correct, reconciling New Zealand's colonial past with the rights and histories of its indigenous people, the Maori. The arrival of Europeans in the 18th century initiated significant change, conflict, and cultural exchange, with lasting effects. In New Zealand, the indigenous Maori people are organized into over 100 tribes and subtribes, each with its own social and political structure, history, and regional connections. For several decades, New Zealand has been addressing historical grievances and recognizing Maori land rights through the Waitangi Tribunal, established in 1975. This tribunal investigates and makes recommendations on claims of Crown actions breaching the 1840 Treaty of Waitangi. Many tribes have reached settlements with the government, including formal apologies, financial compensation, and land returns. These settlements are unique to each tribe based on their specific claims. The process is ongoing, with some tribes having completed settlements and others still negotiating. Archaeological discoveries and historical interpretations can be sensitive, impacting national identity, cultural heritage, and political and legal rights. The megalithic site at Kaimanawa, with its mysterious origins, is a focal point of historical and archaeological interest. Some suggest that reluctance to explore theories about pre-Maori human presence in New Zealand could be politically motivated, potentially undermining Maori status as Tangata Whenua, people of the land, and disrupting the established historical narrative. This situation could lead to significant political and ethnic tensions in the country, potentially affecting land claims and government compensation to indigenous people. Despite official claims that the Kaimanawa Wall is a natural formation, some researchers argue for a more complex and possibly intentional origin, suggesting it could be more than just a coincidence of nature. If New Zealand authorities can dismiss such a controversial site to maintain the status quo, could there be other discoveries proving an ancient civilization existed here? The idea that New Zealand was uninhabited until the Maori arrived about 900 years ago seems questionable, especially considering the extensive human presence across the Pacific. Mainstream archaeology and Aboriginal mythology indicate that Australia has been settled for over 40,000 years, and even remote places like Easter Island have rich histories of human habitation. Given this context, it's strange to think that New Zealand remained undiscovered until 900 years ago. Adding to this mystery are Maori folklore stories that hint at pre-existing knowledge of New Zealand. These tales explain that the tribes came to New Zealand in search of greenstone, or panamu, a valuable nephrite jade found in the South Island. This raises compelling questions. If New Zealand was truly unknown and untouched, how did early Maori or their Polynesian ancestors know about its greenstone? This suggests that knowledge of New Zealand and its resources might have existed before its recognized discovery and settlement, sparking curiosity about the island's history and ancient exploration. The real question remains, was there an ancient civilization in New Zealand? In 1972, a fascinating discovery on a hill in Silverdale, New Zealand, captivated those interested in the country's ancient history. Buried under centuries of humus were mysterious stone boulders, potentially undisturbed for thousands of years. Their intriguing nature and placement, about 10 to 12 at the hill's peak, raised questions. The geological composition of the area made it unlikely for such boulders to form naturally there. Typically, these boulders form over millions of years in sea sediments, starting as small shells coated with sand and lime. Their presence on a clay hill suggested ancient people transported them there as part of an alignment system. Respecting indigenous claims is vital, yet the secrecy paradoxically obscures New Zealand's ancient past. Access restrictions hinder academic freedom and global understanding of Pacific prehistory. 
Recognizing this heritage could illuminate migration, architecture, and society in ancient times, enriching New Zealand's national identity. I hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational content like this. Thanks for watching.